Welcome to this presentation about using SSL with ASP.NET. My name is Doug Rees. I'm going to be taking you through this interesting topic. First up, what we're going to cover today is firstly to describe actually how SSL works so that you can have a, a basic understanding of the concepts. Then we'll look at how to actually generate an SSL certificate by uh, either purchasing one or by making one yourself. We'll then look at uh, a typical scenario where we have a login page and we want the a forms login page and we want the, the, the user to log in and we want to encrypt that information to make it nice and secure. And finally we want to look at a, a particular problem that always affects SSL websites and that's the ability to automatically select SSL for specific pages on the site. So here's a simplified version of how SSL actually works itself. We have a browser and we have our web server. The first step, of course, is that the browser makes an initial request up to the web server. At that point, the web server sends back a certificate with the public key. This is, of course, on the assumption that the first request was to a HTTPS address. So the certificate is sent back from the web server with the public key of the certificate. At that point, the browser has the public key, and by using the public key, it's able to generate some, some sort of local data on the browser and encrypt it using the public key this is essentially shared key. So what's going to happen is the shared key is now going to be sent up to the web server because the public key can encrypts the information and only the private key can decrypt it. The web server can then decrypt what is essentially now a shared key. From here on it's now a shared key that's used for all aspects of communication. So essentially what happens is firstly you get a uh, an asymmetric form of encryption taking place with a public and a private key, but SSL then switches over to a symmetric form of encryption. This is much faster, uh, a much better mechanism. So now what we need to do, of course, is actually get an SSL certificate. Now, in the real world, what you would likely do is purchase one from a vendor, such as VeriSign or Thought, or you might need to check your own hosting company. The hosting company I'm with, for example, provides relatively cheap SSL certificates. I believe our certificate costs something like 40 to 50 pounds per year. Some of the other vendors might charge a fair bit more. Certainly VeriSign charges more than 100 pounds for a certificate. But when you consider that the certificate is for the whole year, it's a relatively small cost to encrypt all the data for your system. So what we can do is generate our own certificate, which is free. However, these really should only be used for internal use or testing purposes. There is the makecert.exe that comes with the .NET framework for testing purposes. We could use that, however, an easier option would be, use, would be to use certificate services. On Windows 2000 server and 2003 server, we've got certificate services installed free, so we're able to generate our own certificates and then use them anywhere within our local area network without any problems. As the sign says, it's all a matter of trust. The problem is you can't really use those certificates on the internet, because if you did, why would anyone using your website trust a certificate that your company has actually generated? This is the whole idea of having a third party vendor. They, they are the, the level of trust and you're simply buying a certificate from them. The fact that the vendor trusts you and the browser trusts the vendor means that the browser then trusts you. So here we go, we're going to go and generate and install an SSL certificate. So to do this, we go to IIS, we right mouse click, we go to the properties, and we go and find directory security. We then go to the server certificate option, and we follow the wizard. We are going to create a new certificate, and we're then going to prepare the certificate, but send it later. So you give your certificate a name. Now this is simply a name that you can refer to it by. This name does not affect the end resulting certificate, so you can call it whatever you like. We'll just leave it as default website. We then need to give it our organization name. So you give it your company name and perhaps you give it an organizational unit. You then must choose a common name for your certificate. This must match the domain name of your website. So for example, if we were using this for my company, we would choose blackbearit.com. However, because we're using this as a local certificate, we're going to use the machine name, which is Miami. We can fill in extra information such as the country, the state or province, and then sort of a, a locality if we wish to, or we can uh, just use, use the drop-down list depending on what we have in there. 
We now need to save this as a text file and we've now saved the information out to a text file. The text file is in the C drive and you can see that it's basically some encoded information inside here. What we need to do is send that now to our certificate server. To do this we can start up Internet Explorer and we've actually got a link on here to the certificate services. Now to get to this it's normally the name of the server that is your hosting uh, product for your certificate services and then cert SRV. And what we want to do is request a certificate. We then need to submit an advanced certificate request and we can now su submit a certificate by using the Base64 encoded file. We choose the browse option, we agree to any sort of security questions about ActiveX controls and then we browse for the actual certificate file, the request file. We press read, it then reads in the text file and then we press submit. At that point the request has now been received, however we've got to wait for an administrator to actually issue that request that we're waiting for. If we view the status of the pending request, it'll simply say select the request you want to view and it'll say that it's still pending at this point. So now an administrator has to come along and actually install or sorry issue the certificate. We can do this from the administrative tools certification authority and what we have here is we have our pending requests we can then view that information and if the administrator wants they could view the information in there to make sure they're happy with that they can then right mouse click and issue the certificate which then gets stored in the issued certificates list we now need to go and view the status again and this time we can actually download the certificate. So we download the certificate, we save it to the hard disk somewhere nice and secure and at the, this point this certificate will have both the public key and the private key so you need to make sure that that information is only stored in a secure location. We go back to IIS, go back to the properties window, go back to directory security, go back to the, the secure certificate button and this time we can process the pending request. We browse for the file, choose the file name, next choose the port number, SSL by default uses port 443 and that's what we would typically use. Next, next, finish. We can view the certificate to make sure that it's the correct certificate we're expecting and we can see that it is issued to Miami from the Microsoft Learning uh, Certificate Server. We do have the private key that corresponds to the certificate, we need that or else we cannot decrypt the information people send to us from the encryption encrypted side. And you can see that it's got our information, our subject name and so on. Okay, at that point we of course could go and delete this file from the hard disk and move it off to a much more secure location than just in the root of the C, but we still need it set up inside IIS like it is. At this point we've now done everything we need to do inside IIS. From here on it's optional, the rest of the features. So in that demonstration we've generated and installed an SSL certificate and you can see it's not too tricky to do that. Next option is to actually look at a login page and look at how we go about encrypting that login page and uh, certainly why we need to do this. In .NET 1.1 there was a one way of doing the encryption which was to actually provide the full HTTPS address of the login page within the web.config file underneath the forms section. There was a login URL attribute and that's where you specified the full address. If you did that it would automatically redirect you then to a secure version of the login page however you also had to add in a location element to allow anonymous access to the login page itself. If you didn't add in a location element you got error messages or you got requested further information. However in .NET 2 they've changed this. You can no longer include a full path in the login URL attribute, which means that approach in the previous version won't necessarily work in the new version. So what we can do is look at manually redirecting within the login page to make sure that it's secure. Now there is a variety of these approaches. This first one we're going to demonstrate is perhaps the simplest.